Hey folks, and welcome to part 6 of the Donkey Kong Country 2 playthrough. It's time for that Arctic Abyss and the K. Rule Keep. Now, I love snow and ice levels in video games. I make that pretty obvious every time I play through a game and there's a snow and ice level. And this is definitely no exception. And hey, it's that uh, fish dude that's on guard. Finally, you get to utilize him in a, f in a level. But he's pretty cool in this game because you can just headbutt stuff. Although you still take on damage, but if you headbutt at the right time, you don't gotta worry too much about it. But I, I like the music here, keeping things nice and chill. Just like the level itself, you gotta keep things chill. You gotta look out for those dudes, the pufferfish enemies, as always. Now, K. Rules Keep has some neat levels. There's an ice level, there's... Well, I think there's a couple levels like this. There's one level that I'll be talking about in a little bit of extra detail once we're there. I've been wanting to talk about it for a minute. And then there's actually, spoiler alert, there's no boss in K. Rule's Keep. It's just a, uh... You just chase K. Rule. But it ain't time for that part yet. Let's keep things moving along here. See if I can get that. Yeah, I got the extra life. Not that I need it. Now, I don't really have much experience with the uh, Game Boy Advance Donkey Kong Country ports. Although, to my understanding, in Donkey Kong Country 2, for K. Rules Keep, the GBA version actually adds a couple of levels. And the music gets changed around a little bit for the third one. But I think the only one I've ever played is a little bit of the first one, and that was many years ago. I've always just played the originals. But it's another one of these mine levels. I like these. <laughs> and I like the animations of the characters when they're floating up through the air. They're just like, Woo! Wee! Look at us! Woo! <laughs> Good stuff. But this is a pretty neat level. I don't mind it, even with the bees in the way. The zings. Zing! Zingo! But anyways... More rockin' jams. Clank, clank, And then I like that part in the middle. This part's pretty cool, too, where it doesn't have a percussion. Just a nice little bridge. But then it goes... And then it starts going hard again. It's like... da 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 and then the drums kick back in, or whatever that's supposed to be. That's good stuff. And there's a DK barrel. That's also good stuff. Oh! Definitely, definitely want to have Diddy Kong around for this one. Definitely want to have both Kongs around for this one. Because I can't tell you the number of times I've ended up bumping into one of those zings and gotten myself into a world of hurt. Of course, I got myself another extra life. Ooh! Speaking of hurt, ooh, I dodged that enemy. But there's another DK barrel. Good, good, good stuff. That is good stuff indeed, if I do say so myself. But keep things rolling here. Whoa, that was close. That was really close. I should have got hit. Of course, there's plenty of times where I probably should have gotten hit in this playthrough. <laughs> and somehow I managed to make it on through. Ooh, better just go for it. But I will say this, and getting kind of close to the tail end of this level, actually starting to get into the uh, home stretch of this game. As I've still got a couple of parts left, though. And I thank you all for tuning in this far, as always. And just gotta keep on floating on. Float on like that one song. What the? Or however it goes. I'm not a fan of that song. I know a lot of people like it, but... Nah. Not for me. Oh, this is the level I've been wanting to talk about for a little while. This is Castle Crush, folks. What makes this level so special? Well, there's a game-breaking glitch, which is so bad that it can literally corrupt the uh, cartridge. And apparently I left a death in, but since it's early enough in the playthrough... Or early enough in the level... Might as well just leave it. But yes, this level has some game-breaking stuff in it where... I'm not, I've never been quite sure how to do it exactly. 
But one of my earlier YouTube experiences was watching a video where some guy was demonstrating this on and switching out the cartridge with some Super Alfred Chicken, which that's a game I need to try to pick up and play again one of these days. But anyways, yes, that barrel with the Rambi. Somehow there's a way to manipulate it to where it can crash the game and make the cartridge crash so bad that you gotta change out the save battery. And even then, there's no guarantee that it'll work. So imagine that, a glitch so bad that it completely destroys the cartridge. I don't know how they let that slip, but... I mean, it's not like it's super easy to activate the glitch either. But for the sake of this playthrough and for the sake of my ROM, I'm not gonna chance it. If you want to watch videos about it, there's plenty of them out there. It's really pro to me. It's one of the most notable things about this game is the uh, Castle Crush glitch, though. It's also I can't really think of the name Castle Crush without thinking of Candy Crush, which I've never really played those games, but. I've played variations of them. I mean, it's just a simple puzzle game you play on your phone. I mean, it's nothing special. But to my understanding, people still play the heck out of those games. So maybe they are something special to somebody. Grab those bananas. Up to 47 lives. Now, I never get... I never get the full 99 in this playthrough. I, I don't bother. But yeah, I'm not really a big fan of this level other than the name and other than the glitch just because it's a slow level. That's my biggest gripe about K. Rule's Keep is a lot of the levels are slow and just kind of tend to drag on. But, I mean, it is in the closing stretches of the game so I guess it can kind of be forgiven. I guess it's supposed to be like an ultimate endurance test. Uh, uh, it's an ultimate uh, test. Should have named the level uh, Crush. Which, man, that'd be kind of terrifying if uh, the game broke so bad that when you boot it up, it just goes uh. <laughs> Which, sometimes I'm, I will admit, that kind of crap creeps me out a little bit with these SNES cartridges, where if something corrupts, it'll just flash an anti-piracy screen. Which, the anti-piracy screen is pretty much similar to the uh, Game Over screen. Which in itself is kind of spooky because it's just Donkey Kong, or not Donkey Kong, but Diddy Kong and Dixie Kong sitting in some kind of oven or something. And the screen turns red, but with the uh, anti-piracy screen, it'll just show up on the Game Overs and just say something about, This is not an authentic cartridge or something along those lines. But still not as spooky as the anti-piracy screen in Donkey Kong Country 3, as it uses some kind of jacked-up, distorted version of the boss theme, which is kind of kind of unsettling as it is. And then coupled with the uh, really spooky Game Over screen, which is a close-up of the characters' faces, and telling me about how I'm using a corrupted cartridge, which is kind of kind of weird how. It would say that how the anti-piracy screens kick on for cartridges that are actually legitimate cartridges. Of course, that, I've had that happen several times when I was a kid with Super Mario All-Stars. and and I never really understood that because it's obviously the real game. It's just old and glitchy and sometimes booting it up would just trigger the screen. Or it would trigger a really weird mess of pixels and then just freeze up and play a song from I think it was the uh, Bowser theme from the first game it would typically play that I wonder if I would hope that the, my, my parents copy of Mario All Stars doesn't do that anymore and they still have it they still play it but that's gonna do it for Castle Crush that's gonna do it for uh, Castle Crush Saga it's time for Clapper's Cavern <laughs> Clap on, clap off the clapper. But yeah, clapper's the uh, seal dude. He turns the water into ice. And this level's actually pretty cool. It's pretty easy to get through, honestly. 
bar a couple of small sections with those blue dudes there. But yeah, that's another one of those peaceful, beautiful snow ice levels. I'm not the biggest fan of the uh, snow levels in the third game, but the first two games, they nailed it. The design's perfect. Although I wish that there were more ice cavern levels in the uh, first game. This one has... It has a couple. It has a couple of them. Some pretty good stuff. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm gonna keep swimming. It doesn't look like I would have been able to keep a long guard for too much longer anyway. Now that's a tricky section right there at the checkpoint. And there's another tricky section up ahead with those blue dudes, which I don't know the name of. They're the ones that turn red, the blue, they change their colors or whatever when they get mad. But this is the section I was referring to. Look out. I can't tell you how many times that perk got me. But it ain't gonna be a problem this time around. It's good stuff all around. Ooh, that little drop in frame rate again, man. Sometimes that makes me a little nervous when I record these playthroughs. <laughs> but I, I know that that's actually another reason I want to re-record Donkey Kong Country 1. It's because I think it was part 3 of that playthrough. Something screwed up and I was still learning how to edit videos. and I, I ended up screwing something up in Sony Vegas and it took me a while to figure out how to get around it and... So, not knowing how to at the time, I just uploaded it straight to YouTube, downloaded it, and then... And then I put it in Vegas. Which, it took me a while to figure out there is a way around that. But here's another level. <laughs> yes, here's another level. This is another one I'm not the, too big on, just because it takes forever to get through, and... I don't... I'm not a fan of levels that make you take your time, I guess. That's why I'm a big Sonic fan, I guess. Because I like levels that are quick to get through, quick to get over. Ooh! And I just don't like to be stuck in one spot for very long periods of time. But let's see here. Climb up this chain. I think the level's called Chain Link Chamber. You gotta look out for these zings. They'll zing and they'll zing. You gotta look out for them. But it shouldn't be too much of a problem, but they definitely are prominent in this level for sure. Ooh, it's those guys. You ain't taking my bananas this time. Nope. None for you. All in all, though, this isn't this isn't an awful level. It's just slow. And there's too much... Well, there's not enough vibrancy. There's not enough color. There's not enough excitement. Well, I guess there is enough excitement. But there's not enough color. It's just kind of bland looking. Which is the biggest problem I had with the first game. It just wasn't vibrant enough. Maybe if there were more jungle levels and ice levels. But no, it just leans too heavy into the gray and the browns. and yeah, It just comes off looking a little bland. I feel like this is another example where the sequel kind of outdoes the original, and... I don't know, I, I just feel like there's a lot of people that don't feel that way. I feel like most people probably fondly remember the first game. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the first game. It's just not my favorite. But I never really hear a lot of people, or really anybody, saying that the second one's their favorite. I don't know why it's good. Ooh, that's... I mentioned that enemy early, in an earlier part. He'll take your lives if you're not careful. But that's gonna do it for the Chain Link Chamber. Gonna play a guitar solo and move on. Let's see what's going on next. Ooh, it's this level. Is it, Yeah, this is the one with the snake again. Aw, oh, man. Gotta bring old Ratley back. Of course. But yeah, this level's kind of tricky because, I mean, it's kind of like that slime climb level. You, you got water rising, and you've got to be very careful. But once you get past the uh, section where you no longer need this uh, snake dude, it's not really that big of a deal. i just not a big fan of this section. 
This is definitely a tough level to get through. I make it look way easier than it is, folks, but that's because of a lot of practice. I mean, I was ready to pull my hair out, throw the controller, get angry, and scream. I think I did yell a couple of times. I mean, I don't get... I'm pretty good about, like, controlling my temper. Especially nowadays. But there have been times where if a game gets on my nerves enough, I mean, I'll at least yell or mumble obscenities or something. But I, I don't rage like I used to. I remember one time in particular I broke a PS2 controller, and I definitely regretted it. But I was young, I was dumb, and full of rage. Full of primal rage. Never really cared much for that game yet. There's so many ports of it. There's a Super Nintendo port, there's a Sega 32X version. I'm pretty sure there's a Sega CD version, there's a Sega Saturn version, and there might be a PS1 version. Why are there so many versions of this game? I don't even recall it ever being like a must-have popular kind of thing either. It's just something that there's like a billion versions of. At least with Doom, everybody likes Doom. <laughs> which maybe one of these days I could do a Doom Let's Play. Not sure which version I'd play, but would likely be the Super Nintendo version. Of course, there's a lot of people who have their preferences with Doom, and finally... Finally done with that section. But the water is still rising. Of course, there was that squawk section too that I completely got into my Doom tangent while that was going on. Which, while I have Doom on 32X, I haven't played much of it. I need to do that. But also, stay tuned for the next part, folks. I'll see you then.